Hey guys, welcome back to MoWorks. Today we have a very interesting video and it's kind of a callback to our very first video which was making a ballistic vest from only items I source from the Dollar Tree. In this video we're going to be making a ballistic vest from only junk I've pulled out of my personal trash and a little bit of trash at work. Now we're not talking about old banana peels and you know old packages of meat, we're talking about paper, cardboard, we got some plastic bags, tin can lids, and uh, a couple of aluminum cans. We're going to try to mesh that all together in a way where we can make a ballistic vest, and the goal is to stop a 9mm. In our first video about the Dollar Tree ballistic vest, check that out, um, we were only able to stop up to a, uh, what was that, CCI stinger from a pistol, but from a rifle it blazed right through. Hopefully with this test we can meet that standard and stop a 22, and hopefully meet the goal of stopping a 9mm. Also, for this test, we're going to be using our new ballistic dummy. His name is Gooba. He is made out of about 10 inches of solid cardboard cut into the shape of a torso, wrapped in many layers of plastic wrap to give him some rigid stability. He has a balloon head and some clothes for a uh, finishing touch, give him a little bit more personalization. He's going to be the one wearing our ballistic vest. Now, if the bullet goes through, the last couple layers of cardboard have high visibility chalk in them, and you will be able to see visually that chalk exploding out, giving us a positive read that, no, the ballistic vest did not work. And if we don't see that, then we know that it did at least stop somewhere in the dummy or on the vest. We have a couple little eBay cameras I just bought for $15, so we're going to mount one probably to the dummy at some point, and we're going to put one behind it, because um, we don't mind if those get blown up if the bullet does go through. The GoPro will probably stay with me and it's going to be uh, some really good shots. So you can see some of the trash we have here. We have all of these old steel can lids. We have this uh, old things like old bags of dog food, cardboard boxes and paper, old plastic bags like those from carrots or potatoes, cereal boxes, styrofoam cups, old birthday wrapping, just all the normal dry trash that you might put in your trash can and we're going to try to make a vest out of it. The only caveat to this challenge is I'm going to be using a little bit of clear scotch tape. This stuff is not very strong at all, but I just need some way to get some of the parts to stick together for what I have in mind. Alright, so I got my workspace. We got our garbage. I'm going to start building the vest. I'm also going to be using just a simple little uh, box cutter for a lot of the cuts for the cardboard and the plastic. And I may go use my anvil that I have over there a little bit just to flatten out some of the metal bits. Um, this is going to be super cool. I'm really excited for this. We're going to build it and then we're going to shoot it and we'll see what the results are in the end. Let's go. Alright, you can see here that I've decided on a roughly 8 by 10 inch plate. That's uh, from what I've researched, fairly standard for like a heavy duty plate like this. Um, you can see we have all of our pop cans over here smashed up and flattened. We have our tin cans layered. I think this is a really good start. I'm going to keep on layer layering these, maybe add a another layer of cardboard and a plastic bag to keep this all contained. Again, we are using a, just a little bit of scotch tape to hold this all together, but a great start overall. got our rest of our tin can lids layered up best we can. We have the previous ones put into a potato bag and I used this carrot bag I cut in half to secure it all together. Save us a little bit on our limited tape supply. Alright, time to figure out a way to attach all of these. By the way, this is some window spline I pulled out of an old window screen. That should help us as well later on. We 
put down our crushed bottles um, under a layer of old window screen and that wasn't holding it quite tight enough so then I uh, crammed the whole thing into a LaCroix box, a little soda box and then I think I'm going to wrap that in paper uh, maybe find a new place for the rest of these because I really want to add all of these and then we're going to start layering, layering and stacking our paper and cardboard. We have kind of breached the dimensions of our 10 by 8 plate that we started with, but most of the armor, most of the plating is still kind of within that range. I wrapped it in paper just now to add a little bit more uh, rigidity to it because it was all kind of loose and falling apart, but now this feels a lot more stable. Okay, now for the layering portion where we just try to slow down that bullet as much as possible before it really hits the meat of what we're counting um, on stopping it with. So we have a whole bunch of layered cardboard on top of our initial vest. We got a little bit of window spline holding it all down. Then we're going to put this really kind of tough plastic dog food bag. I'm going to place that right on top of here like so. And for our final touch we're going to cover it in this uh, plastic just to kind of give it a uniform finish. And then we're going to use this little bit of discarded, thrown away spray paint to add a little bit of flair to it at the end. Alright, let's finish this thing up. Alright, check out the fit. We got Gooba wearing the new junk vest. You can see that it actually turned out quite thick, about three or four inches, mostly because of those soda cans adding a lot of uh, air to the mix because I couldn't get them completely flat. And you know, the cardboard adds a lot of air intentionally for spacing and layering. We use that window spline, tie them up, rig a little bit of a carrier for them. You can see it's just tied in the back, but on a person like me, that would just be looped over the neck. You can see that it is weighing down Gooba a little bit, just his physical form, not his spirits, of course. He's a good one. And uh, yeah, I'll put it on for you guys real quick and we'll probably jump into the shooting section unless I think of something else important. All right, so I obviously don't have Gooba's Goliath of a neck. You can see that um, if I did tighten this up a little bit, it would fit around mine. I just have it around my shoulders, um, just for demonstration purposes. So you can see it is quite thick, it would get in the way, I can't really see my toes unless I lean forward like that. So it does reduce some visibility if that's a problem. Um, you know, obviously trying to get around that, that's not secure again, it would be around my neck. But getting around it wouldn't be too hard. But if you think trying to like uh, fire a rifle with this thing on, you would want your length of pull to be shortened. So on an AR-15 you would be collapsing that stock a little bit. Um, not the most practical thing, but again, this is a junk fest. This is like if you had the worst materials available to you. So, yeah, a lot of fun. I think we should go try it out now. For you guys, it's going to be just a cut. For me, it's going to be tomorrow, but let's see what happens. Hey guys, out in the woods. Next day for me, we're about to shoot uh, at Gooba and our new ballistics vest. Um, like I said, I got that cool paint job on it. It was a little painstaking, but... It was actually uh, a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So we got a cool skull decal on it now. And like promised, I'm hoping I get a good view of this, that's uh, Gooba Cam. So basically we have Gooba with his own little camera so you guys can see what it looks like to get shot at if you were wearing this particular ballistic vest and if you were Gooba. So yeah, this is going to be really exciting. I'm going to strap you guys onto my chrome dome here so you can get a good view of what uh, it's going to look like. We're going to be shooting the P17 first. So we're going to start with CCI Quiets. Move it up to a full power lead round nose from Federal and then finish with a CCI mini mag if it stops those prior to. 
If it stops all three of those, then we're going to move up to 9mm, and that's going to be really exciting if it stops at 9mm. I don't think it will, but if it does, it'll be a new benchmark in this series. Alright, let's get at it. Alright, let's see here. Okay, we're at 7 yards, which is what I believe the FPI states as the nominal distance for uh, self-defense shooting. Not nominal, but like the average distance. So, like promised, we're going to start with our uh, CCI Quiet. This is a subsonic bullet that is moving very slowly, 40 grains, and um, it's designed to be quiet out of rifles. It's a little loud out of pistols, so we do have our hearing protection on. But if it's going to stop anything, this is what it should be stopping. Again, um, <laughs> I hope it stops more, obviously. Again, we're going to be shooting for the middle of that target. We're going to shoot this one a little bit high and left is what I'm going to aim for. Because um, only that middle column, remember, is entirely armored. Alright guys, moment of truth. This is so exciting. First shot on Gooba. Let's go. Ooh, positive impact. You could see there, uh, it didn't even have enough power to eject the round. So definitely a little bit of an underpowered round, but a good way to start this test. All right, so you can see we hit right there, right where we were aiming for. Paint coming off. All right, let's see, so we hit there. Uh-oh, wait, I'm not sure. Let's take it off real quick. And no siree. It did not go through. And we can't really feel for a bulge. But yeah, stopped it. All right, first bullet to go, let's go. All right, it stopped one weak underpowered 22, but will it stop one full power name brand federal 22 lead round nose. This is another 40 grain projectile, but this one actually has a full powder charge and should be hitting with the full force of any other 22 from this Keltec P17. I believe this has a 4.1 inch barrel. Um, it might have 3.1, but I think it's a 4.1 inch barrel. All right, we're gonna be aiming dead center this time. Good luck to Gooba. Oh, we need to turn on his camera real quick. You can tell that one had a lot more power. Looks like we did not hit where I was aiming though. That Keltec has a tendency to be picky. I really likes mini mags, not much else. All right. Looks like we hit about two, three inches higher than we intended. Luckily, it did not break our spline, must have just skirted that. And yeah, hit right there. Nice, okay. Let's check it out. Pretty good look down in there. Oh no, it looks like it went through. Oh, it did, it totally did. But it did not exit out the back. Yeah, check it out. Oh, that would have been right through the heart on him. Gooba would have been smoked. Oh, dang. That didn't stop for nothing. Oh, it just blazed right through. Oh, you can even see the bullet in there. I mean, you guys probably can't. But, uh, yeah, if you can see, there's just that little bit of glint way back in there. Okay, so it only went a little bit into Gooba. So that one I have, like... It probably would have stopped on his sternum, but that's still an incapacitating wound. That is no, uh, I wouldn't put my faith in this at all, for real. Ugh. All right, we're loaded up with another federal lead round nose. I was thinking because there's so many moving pieces in that armor, maybe all the main armor portion of it shifted down. So we're gonna hit a little bit lower with this guy just to see if that one time was like, just like between all the little soda cans and paper and whatnot. So we're gonna shoot a little bit lower and we're gonna see if that works. Uh, shooting lower 
means we're gonna have to aim lower with this ammo because uh because it shot high last time so i'm gonna aim let's say top of the middle tooth right at that knot hopefully we don't break it Ooh, another positive hit let's see where did we hit okay well look that time it hit within about quarter inch of where we're aiming so that's pretty inconsistent yeah, right the side of that knot almost broke that spline again, which is funny considering how little area that takes up. Okay, uh, we won't be able to peel it back and check this time, so we'll just pull the whole works up. Oh, no. It went through again. It almost hit that spline again. That's so funny. Ugh. All right, yeah, check it out. Oh, my boy series is not looking good for him all right oh but it was keyholing look at that you can see uh by the width of that that was too tall and narrow so it was keyholing made it through our protection here and can't see the bullet that time so yeah maybe even a worse result from last time oh gooba i'm sorry but I think you'll forgive me. I'll make you something better in the future, I promise. Hey guys, just a word from Gooba. Gooba has asked very sincerely that you guys subscribe. He's already been shot twice. I think that's worth a sub in and of itself. Gooba does too. So if you guys like the channel, if you're liking the content, if you like this type of test and this type of, uh, you know, silliness, um, feel free to subscribe, drop a like, drop a comment, or you can um, donate a little bit of money to me via the link down below. We both thank you. All right, thought we would do one last little test for fun. We have five CCI quiet, 40 grain lead round nose loaded up. This is the one that the vest did stop. We're gonna shoot five into the vest and see if any have gone through. We can tell that there was one hole um, at the knot and then one hole between the eyes. Those are the two that made it through. So if there's holes anywhere else on the torso, we can tell that our armor is too inconsistent to even stop. Um, the underpowered round, but I thought this would be a fun way to finish off the video. So, let's try it out. Perfect. Went well, a little better than I expected. What I didn't plan for though was that I actually aimed all of those. It looks like I hit the nose over and over, so I might have put one bullet through another bullet. It's whole. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just I'm just I'm just too good. All right, let's let's take a peek at this now. All right, here's our first hole. Here's our second hole, and those were from the uh, full power rounds. Yeah, check that out, Superman, Superman vest stopped let's see here one two three four five yes yeah, so it stopped all five of the new impacts okay well i mean that is a cci quiet but i guess maybe if you were far away with a full powered round oh no that's an idea what if i got back like i don't know i probably got like 20 yards back to the road all right let me put in a full power round and we'll shoot at it from far away and see if see if that could theoretically or uh, quite literally uh, stop the bullet if the bullet was being farther, fired from farther than seven yards. Okay, so we're about 30, 35 yards from the dummy now. We got another federal lead round nose 40 grain bullet. The same ones that penetrated the past two times. And we're gonna try to hit it from here and see if it penetrates at a greater distance and we're going to be aiming for that knot again. Looks like we hit it. All right, let's see here. I think that's our old shot. That might be our new one. Ooh, let's see probably went through ah 
but now we see the truth revealed. All right, yeah, you saw it here. Okay, so at close range, this vest would not stop a full power 22 round, but you walk it back, you know, 30 yards, let's say a more long range engagement for that, uh, for this type of pistol, for a kel P17, walk it back a little bit, and it will stop those full power rounds. Very, very interesting. All right, guys, so we could keep on going on and testing this all day, walking it back with CCI mini mags, walking it back all the way to the point where we're using a rifle, seeing what uh, this vest will and won't do, but we're running out of time for the day. This video is already probably gonna be pretty long, knowing me. Um, so if you guys wanna see more results with this vest, if you want me to shoot more calibers at it, if you want me to shoot from pistol, rifle, greater distance, uh, maybe even some like, I don't know, like uh, those little, uh, oh, I forget, but they're called hummingbird, but in Spanish, those little tiny weak rounds, if uh, you wanna see that point blank. If you want me to see me shooting mini mags, maybe even trying to hit this at a 100 yards to see if it'll stop it, let me know in the comments, I'd be more than happy to. This vest, it's not going in the trash, it's staying with me as least as a memento of this time, and uh, if not for use in future tests. If you like this type of video, let me know. If you have anything else you wanna see from this channel, let me know in the comments. Again, guys, I'm sorry I didn't upload last week. I apologize for that. It was just a busy week in general, but we're getting one out this week, and I hope you guys enjoy. See you around. guys secret car cam with gooba secret part of the video about five minutes after i stopped filming a forest ranger came up to me and he said uh basically in so many words i'm gonna seize your guns and i'm like okay what's going on and he said there is no quote unquote earthen backstop and i was like well there's there's this pile of dirt i'm shooting into there and i showed him the the mound on the side of the road and he said no too many trees too much brush if i had seen you shooting without a proper earthen backstop then i would have had to seize your guns and i was like okay and basically he told me to pack up and i could either shoot at this one other place that's all also sealed off or um head out so he watched me for like I don't know, the five, 10 minutes it took me to pack everything out, and then he left. He wasn't, he wasn't mean. He was very polite, and he didn't take all my guns, which he could have done. But I don't know, man. I have to drive an hour out here till middle of nowhere just to uh, shoot, and now I'm not even allowed to shoot. Uh, there's one place left, one place on this whole mountain left. We'll run it as long as we can.